Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be starting a brand new series. It's going to be the Focus ST Built Engine Series 2025 edition. And this is going to be covering stage one. And it's going to be rated between 450 to 500 wheel horsepower. Now this is what I rate it for the safe limit. Obviously you can go higher than that, maybe, you know, 550. But what limits this mostly is the ARP 2000 head studs. Also, remember to like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and if you want to become a member to get access to, you know, videos early or have special perks, it's greatly appreciated. So let's get started. So I have an older built engine series that I did last year, but this is going to be a better and more refined version of that, and it's going to be more dialed in and precise as far as where to buy all the stuff and where you can get it the cheapest, you know, what's the price range, the part numbers. I mean, this is really gonna dial it in. That way there, it helps you guys source your parts easier doing it this way. So this is how I've always done it when I went to go build my engines. I never like to buy a bundle or a kit from someone and, you know, like a pop and drop kit. I'd rather just source my own stuff if it makes sense and just save money that way about that way there i know where all the parts are actually coming from so to start it off we're going to be going with the pistons the pistons i'm going to select for stage one is going to be the mainly standard duty pistons now standard duty meaning the wrist pin material and the strength more or less um, but these are going to be a 2618 piston so they are going to be really good and i mean they're rated for probably like 800 at the wheels seven eight hundred no problem they can handle it it's just the standard duty wrist pin limits the horsepower um that they can make for those but you know they do also have the extreme duty i just don't have it down for the stage one that will be coming down for the next stage probably stage two or stage three but the standard duty is going to be plenty enough for 500 wheel horsepower you know and here is the 2.0 EcoBoost part numbers. So that's your part number that you're gonna look for for the 87 and a half millimeter, which is your standard, um, you know, OEM size piston. And then you got your, you know, 0.5 millimeter bigger. So you got your five over 88 millimeter pistons right there. So the only reason you'd want to go 88 is if you only have to. So I would recommend sticking with 87 and a half. Like I would just try to stick with 87 and a half because that way there you have uh, plenty of material left down the road if you ever have to use that block again. That way there you don't have to sleeve it. If you go 88 right off and then something goes wrong, well you're gonna have to get a new block or sleeve that block. So for me, I just I would rather start off with 87 and a half. I mean, being that it's a forged piston anyways, it's gonna have to expand when it warms up. Now, as far as the uh, mainly 2618 pistons go with the cylinder wall wear, I didn't notice any wear at all within, you know, the 8,000 miles I had my built 2.0 with the mainly standard duty pistons. So just keep that in mind. I had like no wear at all, no scuffing or anything. It was built perfectly. As long as you have the rotating assembly balanced properly, I feel like that will help and, you know, like I said, the 2.0 will have better longevity than a stroker motor as well on the cylinder walls. So keep that in mind. You don't have to worry about um, daily driving the standard duty mainlays because honestly, I feel like you could go 50,000 to 100,000 miles, no problem, until you know maybe you'd have to check on your cylinder walls. But the 4032s are going to be more of a streetable style piston i just don't recommend them because if you have some sort of knock event then they're gonna literally crack or break in half compared to the 2618s the 4032s have more silicon in them so that's what allows them to be so brittle in the first place but they allow for tighter clearances and so that's why they're not supposed to create uh, more wear on your cylinder walls so just keep that in mind 4032 pistons are definitely going to be way better than the, uh, you know, cast pistons that we have in these cars. But I just recommend the mainly standard duty pistons for this application. The reason why I don't recommend 4032 pistons is because they're so brittle of a material that if you have any 
point of detonation or whatever it's literally gonna you know bust in half or crack i mean it's no good so i just skip the 40 32s personally and just go to 26 18s that way there you're kind of just bulletproofing that type of a scenario right there and preventing that because 26 18s you can literally take a sledgehammer to it and it won't break apart it's crazy so here is the 2.3 EcoBoost part numbers for the Manly Pistons as well. So, for example, you got the 87.6, 87.5, which is stock, 88. Say you have a uh, piston that goes bad, um, like a Ringland or whatever, and it scuffs up the cylinder walls. Well, they have to hone or bore a little bit of material out anyways for the 2618s because they expand... You know quite a bit more they're gonna have uh you know three thousandths or three and a half thousandths worth of uh on piston the wall clearance anyways so i don't know what oem is as far as the clearance goes for that but it's definitely a lot you know tighter so um but anyways with the 2.3 say if you want to do a rs cylinder head swap you would need to go 2.3 pistons because of the uh, extra clearance given for the plus two bigger exhaust valves on the rs cylinder head so you'd want to go with the 2.3 pistons and so you have these options here now another option could be you could also have the 2.0 piston customized to have the uh you know bigger exhaust valve reliefs to fit as well so there's that option because believe it or not the dish design for the 2.0 pistons are actually more favorable for four poor aux fuel versus the 2.3 dish design on the pistons um, the 2.3 was more enhanced and it's made to be more efficient with direct injection versus port injection so you can just tell by the you know flatter dish design i found these the cheapest at this point in time at an elite race fab they were around 650 dollars now you can find them at other places between you know six eighty to seven hundred dollars. The most expensive maybe around seven fifty. That's just the given average range, but um for sure I found them really cheap at Elite Race Fab, and I'll provide a picture right there. So next on the list is going to be your rods. So the Cali's rods, um they're the Comstar H beams. They're uh, a really actually a really good rod. I mean they're they're rated for two hundred plus at the crank. Which, you know, how much can you really follow that? I don't know. Honestly, they're probably going to be just as good as the uh, Manly H-beams, but they're just cheaper. So the 201s are going to be that part number right there. And then, you know, the 4 is basically the whole pack. The 2.3 ones is going to be that. And, you know, the price range. Best place to find these is going to be um, Summit Racing. So type this number in at Summit Racing or from Mountain. Yeah, so the ARP 2000s, they're really going to be only good for 500 to 520. And the reason is, is because that's like the safe max limit. So how you determine if you're going to want to run ARP 2000 head studs for this build is how much boost you plan on running. So if you plan on running, you know, past 30 pounds of boost, then I would upgrade to a better head stud. I would go with the ARP 625s personally, but... You know this is a stage one built motor so we're gonna stick with this right here and this is what the rating I give them so this is gonna be the safe limit for this whole setup here so just keep that in mind next is gonna be the ARP crank bolt or OEM bolt now I personally I've had ARP crank bolts and they are nice but I've reused mine like five times and the last time last fall it loosened up on me around, you know, the 550 wheel horsepower mark. It loosened up, and um, luckily I had a keyed crank. But um, So I found out that the ARP crank bolts can't really handle a shit ton of horsepower. Um, that being said, it should be able to handle 450, 500, no problem. It's just you can't reuse it a lot. You know, maybe two, three times, that's it. And then, you know, but the thing is the OEM crank bolt is definitely going to be the best option it's just one time use that's the only problem with it but here's the part number for the arp and then here is the part number for the oem one 
Now you can find that between twenty to thirty-eight dollars. The twenty dollars is going to be the OEM one, and then the ARP crank bolts going to be between thirty-five to thirty-eight. Next, so I use Molly head gaskets. It's an OEM head gasket. It says Ford right on it. There's the Molly part number right there. Also, the valve cover gasket through Molly is that's the part number. Here is the Molly valve cover gasket. It comes with your VVT solenoid gaskets as well, which is really nice because some of them don't do that. Okay, and then here is the Molly head gasket. These are forty dollars on Rock Auto. You can see Ford Motor Company. You're literally paying now. They're forty dollars. They were like thirty-five dollars versus you know paying a hundred dollars for like an OEM one, eighty to a hundred dollars. So you can find these on Rock Auto. That's why I recommend getting the head gasket and then get the Molly valve cover gasket. And also, um, you know, you can get a lot of bunch of other things on there like the injectors, you know, Bosch injectors, Bosch O2 sensors. Those are gonna be all your uh, replacement parts for that stuff. Um, you can even actually get the timing um, cover gasket there as well. So the national um, timing cover gasket or Timken. Timken is also the same brand, so just keep that in mind. National Timken. This is the national part number. You can you can actually get this from O'Reilly if you put this number down, O'Reilly or Advance. Um, that way, they don't have to pay for shipping. But it's about forty four dollars and fifty cents to ten dollars, depending. You know, you know, like I said, you can get it to a local um, auto parts place. You know, the Molly rear main seal. That's gonna be a good option right there. Part number. It comes with the uh, installer sleeve, so just keep that in mind. Remember to lubricate the seal when you go to install it, and as well as um, take a flat head afterwards once it's sealed and bolted on. Take a flat head and kind of just go around nice and gentle, or like maybe a plastic removing tools, and just kind of go around the edge just to make sure the gasket is sealed inward all the way around. So it's really finicky when it comes to that. So the OEM ba main bearings and rod bearings, I highly recommend just reusing the ones. If you're planning on rebuilding and the bearings look perfectly fine, honestly, I'd reuse them, especially the main bearings. If you want to upgrade to the rod bearings, then you can. Honestly, that, there's no big deal with that. Go with like an ACL um, rod bearing or something. Or, you know, I don't really recommend King bearings, but I personally like the ACLs. Um, but... You know, you there's no big deal running OEM ones for the mains, especially the mains, because they can handle 650 at the wheels no problem, and they don't wear out. And well, they don't they wear out, but they won't wear out like the tri metals, and they can last, you know, a long time. Um, and the rod bearings, I mean, you can go OEM as well with those as well as long as they look good, reuse them. I mean, if you have a shit ton of miles on them, replace the main bearings and rod bearings. To just like a single, you know, part number. Because on Ford's website, this is the reason why I don't have a price on there is because they all they have different part numbers for each section of where it is on the engine. So each bearing has their own part number. And what I was told is basically, if you're gonna do it, get the main bearings. Just pick one and use that same one throughout the whole thing, that same part number, and then the when you bring it to the engine shop to have everything clearanced or you know whatever um make sure that you know they basically will make sure that it'll fit for all of it and you know you're gonna have your crankshaft micro polish anyways which i recommend and also have your pistons rods and crankshaft um bounce as well so that way there you get the most um efficient and optimized feel there's no you know less vibrations it just has a better balanced engine and also the arp cam bolts i should have had that up here but i forgot to actually write it down in that order here's the part number for those right there and then those are going to be around 30 dollars. get those on summit racing and yeah i mean this is going to be pretty much summing it up as far as what you're going to need to start off for parts now obviously you can get, um, you know, the timing chain kit from EMS. You know, they sell that for a couple hundred bucks. So there is that. Rock Auto does have a cheaper option for that. That's a, They sell a whole kit. You're going to want to get the uh, 
timing kit as far as if you're going to time your engine yourself. I recommend the Massive Speed Systems one. Hopefully they still sell it. So if you need to know how to time your 2.0 or 2.3 EcoBoost, I have a video short that I did a long time ago. It's under the How To Video Series, so go check that out. This is the uh, Stage 1 built engine Focus ST Series. It's going to be rated for 450 to 500. That's what I rate it for a safe limit. You know, you can obviously push it to probably 520 and honestly be fine, but I give it a 450 to 500 rating. That way there, it's just the safe limit for this kind of a setup. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Make sure if you go to uh, cvfab.com, use code BB5 to get your intercoolers and whatever parts you plan on getting at CVFab. And also use uh, my code SF2025 for Steeda Performance. Also, I have some upgraded purge lines still available. So just let me know and contact me through whiteblurst at gmail.com. Like the video, subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.